In this video, we're going to talk about the different types of solutions that can form, and we're going to talk about solubility curves. So there's three different types of solutions that we can make. We can make an unsaturated solution, a saturated solution, or a supersaturated solution. So an unsaturated solution means that there's a little bit of solute dissolved in the solvent, okay? So we can get more, sorry, we can get more solute to dissolve. So this one has little solute. Um, a lot of our dilute, solu dilute solutions are going to be uh, unsaturated solutions because you can usually get more to dissolve in those dilute solutions. Um, when we were doing that intro to solutions activity and concentration and molarity and things like that, when you're looking at the beakers, these ones usually had very few particles, very few circles in that container. Now, our saturated solution means that it's holding as much solvent, or sorry, as much solute as it can. So this contains the max amount of solute. Now, sometimes you can add your solute and you can add your solute, you can be stirring or heating it up to get more of it to dissolve. And sometimes you could end up with some solute still left at the bottom. That doesn't necessarily mean it's super saturated. We'll talk about that one in a second. That just means that your solvent can't hold any more solute. You have as much solute as you can dissolve at that temperature. Now, I've underlined the keyword here for super saturated solutions, crystals. This becomes unstable. We have too much solute dissolved in our solvent. And so the solute starts to fall out of solution, making crystals. Okay, we start to see a formation of crystals. Have you ever had rock candy? You know, where you have like a stick or a string and they have the sugar crystals hanging onto that stick or hanging onto that string. That's a super saturated solution. Okay, usually what happens is we dissolve a whole bunch of solute in the rock candy case. It's a sugar solution, but we dissolve a whole bunch of that solute at a really high temperature. And once the temperature starts to cool down, that solvent cannot hang on to the solute anymore. And the solute starts to crystallize out of the solution. That's usually how our super saturated solutions are formed. So just because you have solute at the bottom of your test tube, doesn't mean that's a super saturated solution. It has to be crystals, okay? So we use solubility curves to compare different solutes to see how much we can dissolve in a certain amount of solvent at a certain temperature. Now this one um, on the top left is very basic. Um, you can see that it just has one line. Most of the time they're gonna look kind of like down here at the, the bottom right with lots of different lines and you just have to keep track of what everything represents. But I wanna pay, I want you to focus on the axes for a second. On the bottom axis here, the x-axis, you're gonna see that it's the temperature in Celsius, okay? On the y-axis, that's the solubility, and it says grams per 100 grams of water. What does that mean? Well, if you have something, for example, that has 50 grams, that means that you have 50 grams of that solute dissolved in 100 grams of water. And that's important to know because we could change the amount of water we have. We don't always have 100 grams, which is equivalent to 100 milliliters of water. Let me erase these um, drawings here. Now we can ask a variety of questions about, sorry, I'm having troubles with my, my thingamajig. We could have different kinds of questions about our solubility curves. We could have a question such as this, which substance is most soluble at 40 degrees? So if you have a question like this, you would go to 40 degrees, find that, remember temperatures on the x-axis, and you're looking for the highest line, because the highest line means that I can dissolve the most amount of solute at that temperature. 
So the one that's the highest line here is gonna be your sodium nitrate, NaNO3. You just wanna make sure that you follow this line around to make sure you're reading it correctly and you know which substance it's talking about, okay? Conversely, if this was to ask us which one is the least soluble at such and such temperature, you're looking for the lowest line because the lowest line will tell you which one's the least soluble. We could get a question like this. How many grams of ammonium chloride will dissolve at 50 degrees? So if you get a question like that, you wanna go to 50 degrees and find ammonium chloride. So ammonium chloride is right over here. It's this line. You wanna find where 50 degrees meets that line. Then you're gonna go over to the left to see how many grams are gonna dissolve at that temperature. And you just estimate the best that you can because um, you see there's a 20 gram gap here. So we're just gonna estimate and say that it's approximately 50 grams because it's approximately halfway between this 40 and the 60. Usually these kinds of questions would be multiple choice on a quiz or a test. Um, and usually you can easily tell what the answer should be because they're not gonna be like a 49 and then a 50. We're not gonna do that to you guys. We could ask a question like this, what two substances have the same solubility at 24 degrees? So again, we're gonna go to 24 degrees. We're gonna go to that line and see which substance has two lines that cross at that, or I guess which two substances cross paths at 24 degrees. So in this case, that's gonna be our NH4Cl in our NaCl. So that's right here, right in this spot. And one line is NaCl and the other line is coming up here to NH4Cl. I could also ask a question like this. How many grams of NaNO3 will dissolve in 300 grams of water at 10 degrees? Now remember, I pointed out this y-axis and the label on that y-axis. is the solubility per 100 grams of water. This is asking for 300 grams of water. So first we wanna to go to 10 degrees and find sodium nitrate. So we're gonna to go to 10 degrees and sodium nitrate. Then we're gonna go over to the left. That's telling us 80 grams, but that's 80 grams in 100 grams of water. We have three times as much water, so we can dissolve three times as much solute. So our answer is gonna be 240 grams. We're gonna take our 80 times three. So those are just a variety of the types of questions that we can ask about the solubility curve. You'll see that there's other types of questions when you do your practice um, later on today. And if you have any questions or problems reading these solubility curves, don't hesitate to reach out and let me know. All right, thanks.